The lines are probably already forming for the new iPhone 6. After months and months of rumors, we finally know what it'll look like and what kind of horsepower it's packing. But how much do you really know about that piece of technology in your pocket? For instance, a typical smartphone contains about 300 milligrams of silver and 30 milligrams of gold. The gold and silver used to manufacture our phones this year alone are worth more than $2.5 billion. Our friends over at Compound Interest pulled out the periodic table and identified dozens of other elements that are also packed into your typical smartphone. You can't do anything on your phone without a battery. And that power source is most likely a lithium ion battery. Those batteries use lithium cobalt oxide for the cathode or positive side and carbon or graphite for the negative side called an anode. The anode produces electrons and the cathode absorbs them to produce the juice that powers your phone. Some phone batteries use manganese in place of cobalt and almost all phone batteries and often the entire phone are encased in aluminum. It may look like a piece of glass, but that smartphone screen actually contains some of the rarest elements on Earth. Very small quantities of things you've probably never heard of. Sexy elements like praseodymium, terbium, yttrium, and gadolinium help produce the colors on a smartphone screen. Apple has bragged about the iPhone 6's ion-strengthened glass, but what does that really mean? It's actually a simple chemical process. In at least one method, the glass is dipped into a bath of hot potassium salt. This causes the sodium ions in the glass to migrate, and the larger potassium ions in the bath squeeze themselves into the holes left by sodium. This compresses the glass and makes it stronger. Finally, a compound of indium, tin, and oxygen actually puts the touch in touchscreen. Those three are used in a transparent film that conducts electricity so the touchscreen can function. All right, smash your phone open and you'll see another hidden chemistry world. Go on, do it. I'll wait. You done? Good. Copper is used for wiring in the phone as well as the tiny microelectric components. Engineers also use a metal called tantalum to make tiny capacitors. Capacitors store and regulate electricity and can dump their electrical charge in a fraction of a second, unlike a battery. Of course, silicon is used to make the microchips in the phone, the brains of the whole operation. In the chip, it's combined with oxygen, antimony, arsenic, phosphorus, and gallium to produce a highly conductive, powerful chip, which then you can use to play that stupid Kim Kardashian Hollywood game or whatever. So there you have it, the elements that make up the thing you can't put down. Hey, while you've got the phone in your hand, why not subscribe to Reactions? If you've got a chemistry question, leave it in the comments and check out our video on how smartphones can actually keep you awake. So go to bed. Unless you're watching more of our videos, then stay up. Thanks again to Compound Interest. We'll see you next time.